Matthew, the ninth chapter, please. Matthew chapter 9. We'll look at 9.23, and then we'll look at 10.27. I, I said Matthew. I meant, well, I didn't mean it. I just messed up. I should have said Mark. <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? <laughs> Mark uh, 9, 9.23. And then we'll just turn that over to 10.27 when we read this. Mark 9.23, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. How many believe what Jesus said is right? Well, then say it out loud. Let's quote him. Say it out loud. All things are possible to him that believes. Say it again. All things are possible to him that believes. One more time, all things are possible to him that believes. What does that mean? Well, that means that somebody, the, the thing that somebody said couldn't happen, it can. Hmm? The thing that somebody said is too far gone, can't be fixed, can't be healed, can't be restored. Actually, it can be. Right? Yes. The things thought impossible are possible. Possible to everybody? No. <laughs> to who? A specific group. Those that believe. Look in 1027. Mark 1027. Jesus looking to them said, with men it is impossible. There are a lot of things that's impossible for men to do. And to accomplish, but what? Not with God. Not with God. For with God, all things are possible. The Bible said knowledge puffs up. And you'll find in knowledge intensive occupations that there is a tendency towards pride. And especially people, a lot of times folks who claim to be the best in their field. And they're too quick to look at you and tell you, I don't care what field it's in, but they'll tell you, well, it, that can't happen. And what they should say is, I don't know how to make it happen. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. That can't be fixed. Well, that's prideful. What they should say is, I don't know how to fix it. Yes. Hmm? Yes. That can't be healed. That's incurable. Well, no, that's prideful. What you should say is we can't cure it. We don't know how to get it healed. Right? And we shouldn't be shocked. You know, uh, the, the Bible warns us repeatedly about putting our trust in the arm of flesh, about putting our trust in men. Warns you about it. Because you're just setting yourself up to be disappointed. Because it's all too easy. I don't care who they are, how good they are, how smart they are, how rich they are. It's all too easy for people to look at you and go, there's nothing we can do. Oftentimes they'll say there's nothing that can be done. But what does the scripture say? With men, it is impossible. And we shouldn't be shocked to find out that a man or a woman can't do something. We should have already known that going in. Right? But yet you'll see people just shocked, just floored because somebody told them they couldn't do anything. Well, you should already know. There's just all kind of things people can't do. Hmm? Yeah. You shouldn't be shocked or surprised at all to find out they can't do it. They can't fix it. They can't make it right. But not with God. Amen. You'll never get into a situation where God will say, sorry. <laughs> This is something even I can't fix. <laughs> Will never happen. Amen. Not with God. That's never going to happen for him to say, whoa, this is a mess. <laughs> I know I'm God and everything, but hey, this, this is impossible. 
never going to happen. For with God, all things are possible. Say it out loud. All things are possible. Not with men, but with God. All things are possible. Aren't you glad you know that? That you know the one with whom nothing is impossible. Nothing is too difficult. Nothing is too hard for him. Do you know he's never even having to figure anything out? <laughs> you, you know, you may find out you got this big problem and you run to God and you, you tell him about it. Do you understand? When you do, you have never informed him of anything. <laughs> Never do you rush, rush to him in prayer and go, oh God, this just happened. Oh God, and him go, what? What? When did this happen? <laughs> he knew it was going to happen before it happened. And that's a long time before you ever found out. And he already knows what needs to happen now. And how it can happen. And from where. And who needs to be involved. He knows the end from the beginning. That's why you and I don't have to figure stuff out. We just need to go to the one who already knows. You believe it? We began a few weeks back a series. I thought it would be a sermon. <laughs> We'd cover it. Isn't that silly of me? That we... <laughs> That I'd preach it in one Friday night and would have a single message. And uh, here we are, what, this is the third one now. And I, I don't see finishing it tonight either. So it grew on me. But the title is How to Receive Anything. How to Receive Anything. Because we see clearly all things are possible with God and all things are possible to him or her that will believe. And we've been over two steps already. And best I can see, there are two more steps in this teaching. That doesn't mean there's all you ever need to know about receiving. It's what I got on my heart right now concerning this. And uh, the first step in how to receive anything was what? Can anybody help me out? Hmm? Find the will of God. That's the first step. Uh, the second step is what? Ask. Ask. But a lot of times folks think that's the first step. Whatever you need, ask. Well, no, you need to find the will of God before you ask. And uh, Ephesians 5, we'll just review just a little bit for those that weren't with us. Now the materials are available. Those of you in the room, you can go back to the Word Supply on your way out and get you a CD or DVD of the previous message. It won't cost you anything. So you can't say, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> right? And around here we got a saying, no charge means no excuse for not knowing it, not having it, not getting it. And... Uh, we, we covered this, but in Ephesians 5, 17, um, and let's read the Amplified. It says, uh, don't be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Uh, religion has been taught uh, in, in churches all over the place for decades and centuries that we can't really know the will of God. And so that, and, and that God's in total control, so that means that everything happens must be his will. We just don't understand it. And so that everything that happens is showing us his will. And that is not true. It's religious tradition. It's not the Bible. It's not true. There are all kind of things happening on this planet that don't please God that are not his will. Did you hear me? And the scripture, I mean, it's all through the scripture revealing this. Remember, in the, in the old covenant, God said to his people, I set before you this day, life, death, blessing, cursing. And what did he say next? Choose life 
that both you and your seed may live. Did they all choose life? No, they did not. So then can you say that because they chose death and they disobeyed and they perished and, all, and, and they got conquered by this nation and that and they endured all these uh, plagues and all this loss and all, that that was the will of God? Then that's tantamount to saying that it was his will, even though he told them choose life, it was his will for them to choose death and he knew that they would and that was his plan all along. Huh? See, a lot of this stuff that people try to preach and say, it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't work and it contradicts half the Bible. Amen. No. There's all kind of stuff happening down here that's not right, it's evil, it's not good, it never was the will of God and it does not please God. Right. And it's happening because man has a free will Amen. and has chosen wrongly. That's why. Oh, but he has a plan, and it's working. And even though everybody's not going to go along with it, in the end, this thing's going to turn out right. Come on, are you listening to me? There's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. There's going to be no more curse. Everything has been done to fix everything. It's just a matter of time. But the wise ones bow their knee now. You a wise one? The wise ones yield their will to his will now and bow their knee to the Lordship of Jesus here and now. Is that you? Raise your hand if you see that, that, that's me. So number one in how to receive anything is what? Find the will of God. Where's the first place to go to find the will of God? Your Bible. Right? And now, um, I don't want to take too much time on this, but this is very, very significant. There's all kind of people who have read the Bible casually or read it from like they read some textbook or history book of, of something else and so thought, you know, I didn't see much out of that. And, and uh, because they, they think, well, I didn't see much, there's not much there. No, it's there. It's just not being revealed to you. Come on, are you listening to me, friends? There is, anybody that's walked with the Lord very far and had revelation of his word knows this is rich beyond description. His words are life to those that find them and health and medicine to all their flesh the, the, the riches of the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom of the creator of the universe is revealed in these words. Now people scoff at that and they go, that's just ridiculous. That's just, you know, some old guys back there had some thoughts and they wrote them down. It's like other books of poetry or literature. It is not. And the people who talk that way are blind and deaf and dumb spiritually. And they think because they don't see anything out of it, there's nothing there. But the only ones God reveals it to are the ones that believe in him and love him. Go to Romans 1. If people say, well, there is no God. Well, that to them, this world will be like there is no God. But it's not because there's no God. It's because they're blind. It's because they're spiritually dead. And the Bible is a closed book to them. You have to be enlightened to see what's in here. It has to be revealed to you. And having been in the ministry and taught and preached for some three plus decades now, it's just getting increasingly real to me. I, I keep seeing things I never saw. Things that I preached on for years and then you read it again and you go, what? I know when I first began to see some of this, I, I was in Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry there in, in Oklahoma, and I had the privilege of sitting in the healing school when he taught it and, and helping as a volunteer, assisting him, and later on being involved in teaching there myself yeah, a few years later. And um, Part of my job, which was a wonderful job after that, was to take the great big old 
uh, big reels of, of video that that uh, they they taped the uh, broad excuse me they taped the healing school and for me to monitor them and go through them and check them and make notes and that's what I did for hour after hour after hour after hour wow. and sometimes three and four and five and seven years later I'm sitting there watching and listening to him preach and I'm thinking when did he preach that I've never heard anything like that. And, and the camera would swivel on the front row. And there I am sitting in the, in the throat. I thought, what? What? I was there? I never heard that. And you know, it's true that I hadn't heard it. The words bounced off my eardrums. But I never heard it. And that's how two people can come to the same service. And one leave bored, and the other leave eternally changed. And they heard the same thing, but they didn't hear the same thing. Do the scriptures say, him that has ears to hear, let him hear. In Romans 1, and how am I going to preach the rest of this message if I keep taking these side journeys, but... You don't care, do you? I don't either. <laughs> Romans 1, verse 16. Well, verse 15. Romans 1, 15 says, As much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God. What is the power of God? The good news. The gospel of Jesus. Well, that's what the whole New Testament's about. And the Old Testament are types and shadows leading up to it. Uh, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek, for therein is, re is the righteousness of God revealed. Everybody say revealed. revealed. And how is it revealed? Faith. How is it revealed? Faith. Is it revealed to those who don't believe in it? Those who reject it, those who mock it and scoff it. No, to them, they could read it a hundred times and they won't see anything. They'll see these and thou's and Elizabethan English and archaic ideas and, and they'll question the accuracy of this and that and the other and they'll see nothing and they'll get nothing. And it's not because it's not here. It's because they're blind. How is it revealed? It's revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live not by doubting and skepticism and scoffing and intellectual examination. You live by what? Faith. If you have faith and you read it in faith, you begin to see things. If you, as your faith increases, you begin to see more. And as your faith increases further, you see even more. And as you're from faith to faith, come on, can you see this? As your faith develops, man, and in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, you keep doing this, you start seeing things, you start seeing whole realms of things that you had no idea. We're in there, and, and one of the most exciting things to me now, after a few decades of doing this, I'm, I'm beginning to see connections. I'm seeing this is connected to that, and that's connected to this, and this fits with this, and this came from this, and this is going to here. But you won't see that by casually and intellectually scanning the pages of the Bible. If you love him. I said, if you love him. If you believe in him and you love him and you say, Lord, I treasure your words. I esteem the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. I value it greater than silver and gold. Lord, feed me with your precious words. Open my eyes. Open my heart. I hunger for it. And then you read it in faith. Oh, you'll get fed. You'll be enriched. You'll get light for your life. You'll get direction for your path. 
And when things come up and other people don't know what to do, a scripture will come up inside you and it'll make perfect sense and you'll know what to do and what not to do. Can you say amen? amen? And so what you're doing right now and what everybody that's smart ought to be doing, there's other folk that could have been here tonight that ought to be. It may cost them in days to come. You don't know what's going to come out tonight. You don't know what's in there. And if you're where you need to be and you're reading your Bible when you ought to and you're in the services that you ought to be and the meetings that you ought to be in, what's happening? The Holy Ghost is putting in you a reservoir full of words of life and when you need them, they will be there. And he'll tap on it and pull it up out of you and bring it to your remembrance and quicken you with it. So important to hear what you're supposed to hear and get in you what you're supposed to get in you. Thank you, Lord. Now, where was I at before I got excited about all that? Do you remember? Number one was what? Find the will of God. Number two is what? Go with me to Matthew 7. And I'll review a little bit more and see if we can go further. And if we can't, well then maybe you can come back. Another time. Matthew 7. We had read, I'll just quote it to you, but we had read in James 4 where he said, you have not because you ask not. And we talked about the, the importance of asking. I know it sounds simple, but a lot of people have missed it in this area. They, uh, for different reasons, they didn't feel worthy to ask. They didn't feel like it was important enough to ask. They didn't feel like it was necessary to ask. And, and they, they skip it. And you'll find that the enemy is very crafty this way. He, he, he's, all, he's been all too successful with people in getting folks to run past number one and ignore it and then be confused as to why number two doesn't work. Assuming you did number one. If the Lord tells you to ask, uh, don't assume that you did. When did you ask? How did you ask? The scripture also says to ask in faith, doesn't it? We're to ask the Father in the name of Jesus. And he said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. Didn't he? Yeah. And he said, don't, but, but don't be wavering. Ask it in faith. What does that mean? Well, you've already done number one. You know it's the will of God to be asking this. You found it in his word. You know it's his will. And so then you're asking in faith, believing that he hears you. And according to the scripture, if he hears you when you ask according to his will, you know that you have the petition that you desire. Now notice in, in Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7 says, I ask and what will happen? It shall be given you. Red letters, who's talking? Jesus, Jesus the master. Can you count on what he told you? Yes. Ask and what will happen? It shall be given you. And here's, here's number three. What's the next phrase? Seek. Seek which is not the same as asking. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you, which is actually number four. Hmm? Ask, seek, knock. After you've, do, after you've found the will of God. Can you see this? Verse eight for what? Everyone that asks, what happens to them? Receive. They receive. And he that seeks, Finds. you just never know. Huh? <laughs> he that seeks, Finds. he that seeks, Finds. I want you to say it out loud. He that seeks, finds. Say it out loud. He that seeks, finds. If you want to find something, you need to seek it. What if you don't seek for it? Well, don't expect to find it. Hmm? Why would you expect to find something you're not looking for? <laughs> don't let this be too simple for you. This is very important. 
Go to Hebrews, please. The 11th chapter, or they'll put it upon the screen for us. Hebrews 11 and 6. What does that say? Anybody know that one? Hebrews 11, 6, what does it say? Without faith, it's challenging. Difficult. What? No. <laughs> Impossible. To please him. For he that comes to God must, must is not optional, must believe. Now, it, all things are possible to who? Those that believe. And here's two things he says you have to believe in order to even come to God and to please him. You must believe what? He that he is, and you must believe something else. That he is a what? Of who? Diligent. Who? Diligent. Those who diligently what? Seek him. Seek him. So it is impossible to please God unless you do some seeking. Are you with me? Non-seekers don't please him. And non-seekers are faithless ones. Seeking is evidence of faith. Because you don't look for something unless you believe it's there. And you don't look for something unless you believe you can find it. Seeking. Let me read some other translations of this. The message says it like this. Anyone... Uh, Excuse me, you got to believe that God exists and that He cares enough to respond to those that seek Him. You got to believe something about His nature that He responds to those that genuinely believe Him and reach out to Him. That He's not just going to coldly, callously ignore you and not respond to you when you are sincerely reaching out to Him with your heart and faith. And I uh, just uh, don't try to turn there, but put up Isaiah 45, 19 for me. Isaiah 45, 19. I thought this was interesting today. The Lord says, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. He hasn't hidden what he has said. Do you know that the Bible is still number one bestseller? Yes. <laughs> Everybody ought to know about the Bible. It has not been kept a secret. I said not to the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. He said, I, did, I never told you to seek me in vain. The Amplified says, I did not call the descendants of Jacob saying, seek me for nothing. But I promised them a just reward. This is out of the Lord's own mouth. That if you seek him sincerely, it will not be in vain. You will get a response. You will get. God answers every faith prayer. Are you listening to me? He responds to every sincere faith heart reaching out to him. Every one. Always has, always will. He said, I never said to anybody, seek me in vain. Seek me and get nothing. Seek me and get no response. No, no. He's committed to you. You draw near to him, he is going to draw near to you. You reach out to him. Now, you know, you could say some words and not mean it and not be sincere from your heart, but we're talking about you mean it. You, you, you believe it, you're reaching sincerely. If you do that, you are going to find him. Let me read some scriptures to you to verify this because there are people that try to believe something different and I want you to know what the word says. You got time for five or 10 or 25 scriptures, huh? Huh? <laughs> Don't try to turn to these. Just listen to them. And uh, you can write, write them down if you want to read them and look at them later. Deuteronomy 429. He said, if you'll seek the Lord your God, you shall find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. What, what did the Lord say? If you seek him with all your heart and soul, what did he say? 
you will find him. Uh, Jeremiah, well, excuse me, 1 Chronicles 28. Let me do it like this. 1 Chronicles 28, 9. If you seek him, he will be found of you. 2 Chronicles 15, 2. If you seek him, he'll be found of you. 2 Chronicles 15, 4. In their trouble, they did turn to the Lord and sought him, and he was found of them. You seek him with your whole desire. He said he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. Jeremiah 29. Put this on the screen for us for sure. Verse 11. A lot of people know this, but let's remind ourselves. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a what? Expected in. Then shall you call upon me and go and pray to me and I will what? I'll hearken to you. If he said he'd listen to you, what does that mean? Verse 13. And you shall what? You will seek me, and what else? And you will find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You, you, you can't play with it. You can't be half-hearted about it. You've got to mean business is what he's talking about. If you just say a little religious nothing prayer and you're kind of half-hearted to say, oh God, if you're out there, or if you say it in unbelief, well, prove to me that you exist. There's no faith. There's no heart there. You don't mean business. But if you seek him with all your heart, what did he say? You're going to find me. I'm going to see to it that you find me. Verse 14, and I will be found of you. Hallelujah. And he went on to talk about how he would deliver from captivity. Thank God. Is he still a, a deliverer today? Still a healer? Still a need meter? For who? What kind of people? Those who seek him. Seek and you shall find. Don't let it be too simple for you tonight. Everybody said out loud, seek. seek. And you shall find. And you shall find. Do you know why a lot of Christians have not found a lot of things? They either didn't seek or they sought just a little bit half-hearted feebly and then gave up and didn't seek further. No. How many believe what Jesus said? Seek and you shall find. Oh, thank you, Lord. I believe it. Do you? Amen. Seek and you shall find. Uh, the scripture even though it sounds so simple, it is revealing real faith. If you just ask and keep asking and keep asking and keep asking and just keep asking and keep asking, it shows you don't believe God heard your prayer. It shows you don't believe he granted your request. It shows you're not convinced on whether it's even the will of God or not. So when you ask in faith something you know is his will, once you finish asking, what should you do? You say, thank you, Lord, and, and, you should now begin to seek for, look for, the answer to your prayer. And here's where so many people have fell and come short. They, they ask but then they just wait for it to come fall on them. <laughs> hmm? And just wait. And wait. No, seeking is where some work comes in. <laughs> Thank you for those two amens. <laughs> we just, you know, Ten years ago, we, we came here by the direction of the Lord and started this church. We didn't start it here. We started it over at another place. How do, you, how do you know where to start it? Hmm? We just were down uh, there in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, not too many months, you know, just what, two or so years ago, Finally got settled about direction. What's number one? Find the will of God. And as soon as we got settled that we were supposed to start a work down there, what do you think should come next? Ask the Lord 
Okay, Lord, we're convinced this is your will. We got that settled in our, in our hearts. That took a while. I said, that took a while of praying and waiting on the Lord. And I've found that if it's God today, these big things like this, if it's God today, it'll be God tomorrow. It'll be God next week. And the more you seek him and wait on, on him, it just gets stronger and stronger in you till you get to the place where you... Uh, but you know, let's back up to here. Let's say, well, I don't know where to go. I don't know where's the will of God for me. What should you do? Well, you know it's his will to let you know. So then you should ask him to show you where you need to be and where you need to go. And then what do you do? Gripe? Huh? And complain about how you don't feel good about where you are and what's going on and what you don't have and what you can't do and and, 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 and fuss at the Lord that you've asked him a thousand times and, and what is he waiting on? And why won't he show you? Now this is real attitude, friends. Let me, uh, let me share something with you that the Lord's ministered to me a while back, another minister I was talking to. And uh, the Lord had uh, reminded me of my time with Brother Kenneth E. Hagin. Uh, after several years of, of being and working there in the ministry, I was allowed to, to work with him and uh, sing and, and open services with him and that kind of thing. So I would be in the speaker's room with him before the service every day at healing school. And when this first began to happen, I thought, wow, I, uh, I'm, I'm with the man of God back here, you know, just me and him. And and after a few times, I thought, well, you know, man, uh, I could ask him questions. And you know, we could talk about spiritual stuff. And I could find out some really, really important things. And so one day I asked him a question that was real big on my heart. And, and he just kind of looked at me and said, uh-huh, and didn't say anything else. And it was uncomfortable, quiet. So then he said, all right, go on and get the service started. And I said, yes, sir. And, well, another day or two, some things, you know, time transpired. And something came up. I thought, well, you know, maybe I asked the wrong question. And so I thought of a better question. <laughs> what are y'all laughing about? Yeah, like what were you to have done? Uh-huh. <laughs> and so <laughs> I... I studied a little better on this one and and asked a more intelligent, more knowledgeable question. And he acted even less impressed with that one. He's like, uh-huh, and kind of grunted and didn't even talk to me about it. And and said, you know, it was just quiet. We, just, we sat there for 30 minutes. Nobody said anything. Uncomfortable. And so I, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm doing something wrong here, ain't I? <laughs> what? Uh, and the Lord, you know, I, I don't mean to hurt a voice, but inside me, he began to let, it just came up to my mind and I could see and understand. And, and I'll try to explain it to you in my own words, but it's like he said to me, son, uh, you're trying to get him in your conversation. That's the wrong direction. Join his conversation. Don't try to get him to talk about what you are thinking, what you want to talk about. See what he would want to talk about. And, and just in a flash, I realize that's how the Lord is. And it's too many times people have tried to get him in their conversation. And think about what attitude this is. To get all huffy and go, God, I asked you a question now. <laughs> well, whoop de doo <laughs> You asked a question. And I need you to answer me. No, you need to find some humility. Yes. And you need to begin to just, just, just lay before him and, and, and seek him. What would he, what would he want to talk about? You don't want to try to get him into your conversation. You want to join his conversation. 
I know it sounds simple, but man, this is important. So I didn't do that anymore. I, and, and then one day he, he mentioned something, he said something, and so I thought, hmm, he's interested in this, you know. So I made a little comment about what he was talking about. Next thing you know, we had talked for 30 minutes about it. And I found out it was much more profitable than these heavy-duty doctrine questions I wanted to ask. <laughs> Jesus operated this way. Nicodemus shows up at his door by night, remember? And he says, teacher, we know, even though all the scribes and Pharisees said otherwise, you must be a teacher come from God for no one could do the amazing miracles that you do except God was with him. He's talking about the validity of the ministry that so many are completely rejecting. And of course, he's a scholar and he dwells with scholars. Jesus looks at him and smiles and says, you got to be born again. Huh? Huh? He just ignored all that. Why? Because they didn't need to talk about that. Nicodemus thought they did. That's, this is how real ministry is. It's not just responding to people's questions and people's curiosity. It should be by the leading of the Lord as to what is the word in season. <laughs> did I lose somebody? <clears throat> Selah. <laughs> Think about it. What was I talking about before I said that? You keeping up? Yeah, I know we're talking about seeking. I didn't forget that. But hmm? uh, Once you have asked, what's it time to do next? Seek. Look for it. Let me give you some definition. Um. To seek literally means to make an effort to find, to make an effort to locate, to make an effort to discover. I'm, uh, I'm seeking right now, have been ever since I started speaking. I, uh, I studied, I prayed, and before that, the reason I, I, I'm speaking to you about what I'm speaking to you about is because I sought him and asked him about that. Preachers, let's talk a little bit about how to get a message. How do you get a message? Number one, you want to find out what the Lord would say through you to the people. Now, the thing that will get in your way is trying to do good. Hmm? Trying to show, show how much you know, how much scripture you can quote. Did I lose somebody somewhere? Hmm? You know, trying to, 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 to show somebody something. That will mess you up. You want to do you want, to, you want to get in his conversation, not try to get him in yours. Amen. Lord, what, what do you want to talk about? And then something will come up to you. Today, it was this, this word, seek. And I knew from earlier in the day. And I, I had thought maybe this a week ago, but I don't assume it. It could change. And so I know I'm looking for seeking. So you know what I did? I sought about seeking. I, 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 I begin to seek for the verses in the Bible that deal with seeking. Know with me or not? I'm looking for it. You know why I'm looking for it? I believe it's there. I know it's there. I'm convinced it's there and I believe with the Lord's help I can find it. You know what another word for that is? Faith. Are y'all with me tonight or not? And so I sought and I sought and I sought and I looked at probably 1,500 verses. And they're all good, but I'm looking for the right ones for tonight. Hmm? And why am I looking for them? I'm convinced they're there. 
And I'm convinced I can find them. Amen. And I'm convinced the Lord will let me know when I find them. That's right. And so when I read one that's applicable to tonight, I get a quickening. Amen. And I get a knowing, oh yeah, this is a good one right here Amen. for tonight. Amen. That's it. So I take it out of the big pile and put it in the little pile. Yeah. And the notes I brought in tonight, that's not the big pile. That's the little bitty narrowed down, reduced, reduced, reduced pile. Amen. <laughs> and so then we get up and read our text and I begin seeking for the utterance of what's supposed to come out tonight. Did you hear me? And I'm sharing and I'm believing that we will get to where we need to get and hear what we need to hear, and I'll be able to say what I need to say, and that the Lord will speak through me, and it won't just be me. And I'm seeking for it from the time I start speaking to the time we finish up. I'm looking for it. I'm, I know it's there. I believe we can get it. Come on, are you listening to me? That's the way Phyllis and I operate in every area of life. Every area. What carpet do you get? What about that TV equipment that we're getting down there? That's a substantial purchase. There's a lot of stuff around. Technology changes all the time. What do you get? What's, what's issue number one? Help me out. Is it even the will of God for you to get some TV equipment? Y'all with me, friends? Because, see, if I'm over here trying to find it and, and, and I skip number one, <laughs> That's why so many Christians are frustrated and things are not working and they just keep running into a wall and they go, well, I'm doing all the faith principles. I'm confessing, I'm claiming, I'm sowing, I'm doing. Yeah, but what about number one? Should you even be doing it? Well, once you, once you discover and get settled that you are, what's number two? Do not fail to do this. Uh, husbands and wives, uh, people that are working together, use the prayer of agreement as well. Uh, get together and say, Lord, we ask you. We at Phyllis and I did. We were riding down the road. We've learned to do this. When you've got a lot going on, you don't need to put it off till another time. Uh, I'll just do it just on a regular basis. Something come up and I see that we are supposed to do that. We are supposed to go that direction. I'll just reach over. I'll say, give me your hand. And, and she and I in the car, I'll say, all right, in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you to direct us to the right people and the right equipment and the right price and the right deal. We're asking you for it. We're convinced it's your will. We believe we receive it. You said if we would agree as touching what we ask, you'd do it for us. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, what's it time to do? Let me go over here. What's it time to do? Huh? Do you think some people are missing this step? What's it time to do? If I believe God's heard my prayer, I believe it's the will of God, I believe he already has this thing set up for us, then it's not a, me, not a matter of me trying to work everything out or figure everything out. It's just a matter of me finding what he's already prepared. But how am I going to find it without looking for it? Hmm? Young single people, middle-aged single people, older single people, anybody that thinks you're supposed to be married or has settled in your, in your heart that you should be married. The scripture said, he that findeth a wife, <laughs> findeth a good thing. Wonder how come I'm to find must have been looking. <laughs> so you've got folks that say, well, you know, I, uh, I'm just waiting for my ama Miss Amazing to come find me. I'm just waiting for my Prince Charming to come find me. Well, no, I'm not saying you have to date everybody in the neighborhood. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but I am saying... Whatever it is you believed you've heard from God about, you need to be looking for. Amen. You need to make 
a purposeful and diligent search. And you're not just looking for them or it. You're looking for God. You're searching for his, what he's already provided. You're, you're looking for that and you're confident that it's there. You're confident he'll help you to find it. And you're confident when you do find it, you'll know it. He'll let you know it. He'll give you that witness. Go back to Hebrews eleven six in your mind. Now you'd have to turn there. What did it say? You must believe that God is. And you must believe what? That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me, uh, I didn't read this translation to you about it. Uh, the BBE, the BBE, the basic English says, without faith it's impossible to be well pleasing to him for it is necessary for anyone who comes to God to have the belief that God is, and, and most Christians have that one. Most any denomination that you want to talk about, and a lot of people are really strong on part A. They believe in God. They believe He's real. They believe He exists. They believe He's all wise. He's everywhere present. He's all powerful. They believe that strong. Man, they'd die before they'd say, I don't believe that. But they completely omit the next part. Ignore it. As what, what else must you do? You must believe that God is and you must believe he, he's a rewarder of all those who make a serious search for him. What school do I go to, Lord? Hmm? Is that number one? No. What's number one? Should I go to school? Is number one. Don't skip number one. But if you get settled that you are supposed to, what's number two? Ask, Lord, where am I supposed to go? Where's the best place for me to go? Where's right from, where's your plan and will for me? And then number three, what? It takes some work. It takes some effort. Look. If I looked up 1,500 verses, why can't you look up a thing or two about what school to go to? Right? See, a lot of folks are just lazy. They ask the Lord, but then they're not, they're not doing their due diligence when it comes to looking for it. You're looking in faith. Now, I, I'm not, I don't mean... You have to comprehensively check out everything that's available. No, we need to be led better than that. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to date everybody. You have to find out all the details on all the schools or all the jobs. No, 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 no. That can be a terrible waste of your time and just wear you out for no reason. And yet you are supposed to search. But it's a spirit-led search. I said it's a spirit led search. And I've found that in the spirit led search, some of the places and things or situations we looked at that weren't the one we were supposed to wind up with was educational. We wouldn't have even known that that one was the right. We were so ignorant of the whole area and the whole uh, things that we were dealing with that if we hadn't had something to compare it to, we wouldn't have realized what a good deal the Lord was giving us, what the favor that was going on here. Come on, are you listening? Yes. So some, a number of things that you learned that weren't where you're going to wind up was all for your education, all for your training and development. You were learning something in every one that would help you to spot the will of God. They that seek, tell me what will happen. Say it out loud. They that seek, they that seek will, find. will find. Thank you, Lord. Now, that's the one that searches with all of his heart, sincerely, diligently, the King James says. See, it does add that word. It's not a half-hearted search. I mean, you're, you mean you're going to find this thing, right? You, you didn't start out to try to do anything. You started out on a search to find. And we're going to search till we find. Amen. Right? Yes. We're on a mission. Amen. <laughs> uh, 
there, there's, a, there's a beautiful picture of that that Jesus talked about in Luke uh, 15 and 8. You don't have to turn there. They'll put it up on the screen for us. Luke 15 and 8. Jesus said, What woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and do what? Seek diligently until what? Huh? Till she finds that thing. What? Verse 9. And when she has what? Found it. She calls her neighbors and her uh, friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found the peace which I lost. Why don't people search till they find? Why don't they? It's a lack of faith. It's a faith failure. Why? You either don't believe it's there or you don't believe you can find it. We believe God is there and we believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. What does that mean? He's going to cause you to find. When you seek him with all your heart, he said, you will find. I will be found of you. He's going to see to it. I can just see him. When we're seeking him with all of our heart, if he has to, he'll move us around. He'll move it over here. Why? So they find it. <laughs> but it is hard to steer a parked car. Oh, God, lead me. Oh, God, direct me. Oh, God, lead me. Oh, God, direct me. And he's saying, put her in drive. Put, leave the parking lot. Give me something to steer. <laughs> Can you see this, friends? <laughs> Let me read you some other good verses, and I, I think I'm about done. Some other good verses about what happens to those that really seek him. Psalm 119. 2. You don't have to turn there. They'll put them up for us. Uh, 119.2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that do what? Seek him with the whole heart. What happens to you? You're blessed. You're blessed. Uh, Lamentations 3.25. Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good to them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. What happens? The Lord is good to those folks that seek him. You know what else will come to you? Proverbs 28 and 5. Proverbs 28 and 5 says, They that seek the Lord understand all things. Glory to God. Let's, let's quit scratching our heads and go, I don't understand that. I just, that's a mystery. I just don't understand it. What's number one? Do you need to understand it? Do I need to find out about this? Right? And if you settle it that you do, what's number two? Ask the Lord to reveal it to you and show it to you and cause you to understand it and make it clear and plain to you. Then what's number three? Get to looking for it. Look. Search. Believing it's there because you asked him and believing you can find it and he'll cause you to find it. Seek and you shall find. Where's my house at? Huh? <laughs> where's your place at? Where, you know, where's your ministry place at? Where's your, your, your connections? Your, we already talked about spouse, if that's the case. Do not get depressed and get down and get hopeless and be faithless. That's believing. I can't find it. It's not that. Well, you could just be lazy. <laughs> How I many know it's mighty easy and convenient to just throw up your hands and go, I'm not going to look because I just don't know if it's there. And It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Man, it's just, you know, I looked yesterday for 15 minutes. 
I didn't see anything. <laughs> Is that wholehearted? Is that diligent? No. And that's why person after person prays a good prayer and then never sees any results. Because they don't go for it. I'm telling you, some of this stuff has been work. Finding the right place to have these churches. Finding the right situations. Finding you know, the right equipment, the right stuff. And it's not just like it's for 30 minutes. It's day after day and week after week. And then when that project is done, there's something else needs to be done. And guess what? Got to find it. Hmm? And I, I refuse to get up and say anything to you as the church about this is a project. We're going to believe for this. We're going to do this until I know that I know that I found it. And it's inconvenient. And it takes time. Oh, but friend, the results are wonderful. How, aren't we thankful every project that we've had? The Lord has just done it, done it, done it, done it, so easily, so quickly, so wonderfully. And that wasn't just me or that wasn't you. It was because he graced us to find a plan to start with, right? And not be trying to do something we shouldn't be doing. And then once you get on it, you don't try it, you do it. We're on this thing to the end. Right? If it was God yesterday, it's God today, and it'll be God tomorrow. He doesn't change. He doesn't change his mind. And we're not quitting. We're, not, we're, we're Like we talked about in the offering, we're not drawing back. We're not shrinking back. We're going to do it. And we can do all things through him as he strengthens us. Can you say amen? amen. For those who've been attacked physically, so-called incurable, terminal diseases, we're talking about how to receive anything. We're talking about how to receive a healing. How to receive a healing from a so-called terminal, incurable condition. What's number one? Find the will of God. Is it the will of God for you to die with that disease? Die young, die wrong? Or is it God's will for you to be healed? Then number two, what? Ask and believe you receive. Right? Yes. Then number three, what? Yes. Listen to this. Amos says, thus says the Lord, Amos 5, 4. Put it up on the screen for us, please. Amos 5, 4. Thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, seek me and what? You shall live. live. <laughs> Say it out loud, seek me, seek me. and you shall, live. you shall live. Verse 5. Seek not Bethel, or Gilgal, Beersheba, they'll come to captivity, Bethel will come to naught. But verse 6, do what? Seek. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. And what happens? What will happen? You Seek the Lord. And you'll die. No. 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 <laughs> Seek the Lord. And you shall live. You shall live. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory. Verse 8. Seek Him that makes the seven stars an Orion and turns the shadow of death into the morning and makes the day dark with night and calls for the waters and pours them on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. If he can do all that, he can sure find your healing. That's right. Help you to find it. Help you to find your strength. Help you to find your recovery. And oftentimes there are things we need to do. We'll be talking about some of those things, I believe, later, the last part of this. But uh, this is such an integral, vital part. Don't just ask and then sit and do nothing. The moment you've asked and believe God's heard your prayer, what do you do? You get up and start looking for it, right? You get out the flashlight. You get the broom. Come on, are, are you with me? You look behind every door. You sweep under every rug. Come on, are you listening to me? You look out and, and, and you know, I, I, again, you don't have to look at every bush and every rug. 
follow the Spirit of God as to look over here and look over there, but just keep on. Why? Because you believe he heard your prayer. You believe he's given it to you. You believe he's already set it in line for you. And, and if I'll just stay on it, I'll find it. Amen. I'll get it. Because right. it is written. Amen. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, let's lift our hands. Let's thank the Lord for his good word. Let's thank him. 